Good evening, and welcome to Louisville Late Night. This evening we're taking you to the beautiful Baxter Theater in the Highlands here in Louisville, Kentucky, for the premiere showing of Joe Gray's film, Green Blood, Red Tears. And before we do that, we were able to catch Joe Gray, and uh, we want to talk to him for just a few moments. And before we do that, I want to tell you just a little bit uh, about Joe. Uh, Joe's been a friend of mine for uh, nearly 15 years. He's a uh, filmmaker here in uh, Kentucky. Joe uh, was raised in a, on a tobacco farm in rural Kentucky. And uh, prior to getting involved in, in the film business, uh, he uh, was uh, he's a Vietnam veteran and a graduate of uh, Yale University. And uh, Joe's, uh, as I said, Joe's, Joe comes from a farming family. And uh, Joe has a tremendous uh, interest in uh, issues having to do with agriculture and uh, and uh, ecology, if you will. Um, many people uh, have focused on the plight of the small farmer in the United States, and uh, you know, such as uh, John Mellencamp, Willie Nelson. But Joe offers something which, uh, which I think is is just uh, tremendous, um, and in in this new film that you're about to to see, and uh, it's a little bit. Uh, hard hard to describe. Before we get into that, I, I just want to say that uh, Joe's film uh, is gradually being uh, recognized and uh, not that long ago there was a big reception for him at the Smithsonian Institute in Washington DC and I hope that gradually uh, here in Kentucky uh, there'll be a trickle-down effect where uh, <laughs> the hard work that, that Joe Gray has done in his life, he's he's one of the most serious uh, artists that I've ever come across. Uh, that uh, that his work will eventually be appreciated. Now today's uh, or this evening's uh, focus on 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 this film. The, the nature of the film is is sad, in in, in a sense, as as you'll see as we talk about it. But what's what's really sad is is when when something's happening that's hurting people and and nothing is done about it, or or people just don't understand what's going on. And what Joe's doing with this film is is he's going into some areas that simply aren't talked about, and he's talking about it very very directly and uh, and very bluntly. Um, let me introduce Joe to you. And Joe, could you tell us a little bit about the about the film? Sure. Green Blood, uh, Red Tears is a 90-minute uh, documentary that investigates the plague of farmer suicides, both in this country and abroad. Um, farmers have the highest suicide rate of any occupation, and uh, what I tried to do was investigate the uh, underlying causes. Uh, the film was motivated by the untimely death of my nephew, James Gray Goodman, who was a farmer in uh, Warren County, Kentucky. Um, he took his life in uh, 1995, and for the uh, following five years, uh, I uh, journeyed around the country and interviewed those people who I thought were in authority, who had studied the issue, who had insights into uh, the reasons for um, my nephew's death and the death of hundreds and indeed thousands of other farmers in this country and uh, in other agricultural societies like India, um, in England, Spain. And uh, what I discovered was um, it's a very complicated and not an easily understood issue. Uh, the commercial media has made a lot about farmer suicides uh, in the Midwest during the 80s, and uh, in most of those reports, it tended to blame the farmer for his own uh, predicament. What I try to do in Green Blood, Red Tears is go deeper into the subject uh, to look at the uh, combination of reasons that uh, bring farmers to this sad plight. 
the film opens with uh, interviews with uh, James's family and friends, the farmers in his neighborhood who describe his, uh, his character, his devotion to his church and his family, his uh, devotion indeed to agriculture. James was a, um, had the highest degree you can receive in, uh, among the future farmers of America. He was a well-respected uh, young farmer in uh, the Bristow area of Warren County. And the last person you would think to have uh, taken his own life. So the surprise and shock which uh, followed his uh, death uh, really prompted me to uh, look deeper into this uh, phenomenon. And I interviewed uh, sociologists in the Midwest, uh, epidemiologists who had studied the issue, uh, economists, um, suicide uh, psychologists, anyone who I could find who had studied the issue in depth and seriousness. And I put together this film. Uh, it's a long film, but I think it's necessary because the uh, issue is important and poorly understood. And it's necessary, I think, to elaborate all the details because suicide is not a, a single factor um, result. It, it results in a combination of factors. And for farmers, the most uh, pressing one, the economic, uh, the difficult economic uh, circumstances that uh, face uh, small farmers who live their life and farm uh, perpetually in debt because uh, of the necessity to borrow money, to put a crop in, to put the chemicals on the ground, to have uh, large-scale equipment. Uh, all these uh, keep farmers uh, perpetually in debt, and James was no different. But debt is really only the surface issue. And as you will see in the clips that uh, uh, we're going to show tonight, there are a lot of underlying issues that uh, complicate the problem and make it more difficult for farmers to resolve the issues of debt. Indeed, um, some of the uh, treatments that farmers are given by the conventional medical uh, establishment may indeed uh, compromise their ability to think clearly and deal with the uh, more conventional problems that we know about. Joe, if we were to summarize the, the uh, basic uh, influences going on here with the farmers, uh, would, would you say that one issue has to do with the farmer's debt and the stress that uh, small farmers are under? Another issue has to do with the uh, insurance, life insurance, uh, kind of a secondary gain, if you will, from, from the farmer's benef family benefiting from their having committed suicide? In well, I think, I think that's, th that's the um, conventional uh, view, that these farmers uh, sacrifice themselves in order for their families to gain financial benefit. But if you analyze it deeper, you'll find that farmers are um, confronted with a number of issues, particularly in my um, nephew's instance. Uh, James raised a lot of tobacco which is uh, common for uh, farmers that are trying to make it in Kentucky. Uh -huh. And if you raise a lot of tobacco, that means you have to apply a lot of uh, pesticides. And uh, it's been known since the 1950s, though not widely known, that organophosphate pesticides will are a neurotoxin. That is, they compromise the ability of the brain to uh, manage the stress of other factors, such as financial debt. And then on top of that, we've had in the last uh, decades uh, the introduction of psychotropic medication. I'm talking right. about antidepressants. All right, the serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Exactly. And uh, what is coming to light now, particularly in interviews that I did with uh, psychiatrists in England who have confronted a similar problem among sheep farmers who use uh, organophosphate pesticides to disinfect their sheep and, and avoid scabies. Uh, is a, an uncommon number of suicides. Well, there's very little in common about the agricultural practices among sheep farmers in England and tobacco farmers in Kentucky, except for their use of pesticides, organophosphate-based pesticides, and the prescription of psychotropic medication by a medical community unfamiliar with the fact that uh, organophosphate pesticides are a neurotoxin. Uh, if you talk with anyone who ha prescribes or has studied or markets uh, these SSRIs, these psychotropic... Uh